Well, hello and welcome to this event. My name is Eric Knowles, and I am running for Congress in Maryland's 3rd District. And uh, I'd like to take a little bit of time to tell you a little bit about myself. Uh, once again, I'm very glad that you were able to come out here and show your support. It's a worthy cause. We are uh, definitely trying to do something big here. We want to change our country, take it back, and bring it back to its constitutional roots. And this is the first step in that, uh, in that adventure. So a little bit about me. I'm, uh, I'm an Air Force veteran. And as such, I swore an oath to the Constitution, and it's an oath that I swore to God. It's an oath I take extremely seriously. Um, so I'm honor and duty bound to be doing this. There's a lot of things that a 34-year-old would rather be doing with his time other than campaigning and knocking on doors and trying to convince people to give up their hard-earned money, especially in such a failed economy that they've given us. But it's absolutely necessary, and... It must be done. We're here because we want to do great things. We're trying to uh, you know, get people involved and let them know that there is a, a means by which to uh, finally get our country back on track, and it's in, called being involved in the political process. So a guy like me who is a bartender who uh, works for a living uh, you know, eight to eight or more hours a day, why does he get up and why does he do all this? Well, like I said, as a veteran, I'm honor and duty bound to be doing this. It's, uh, it's something that, it's an obligation of mine, you know, as much as I would like to, like I've been saying before, do other things, it's something that I have to do. Uh, also, as a father, I am obligated, as all parents are, to try to leave this world in a better place than what we uh, were given to by our parents. So, need to, uh, get out there and actually get involved with this process. And that's where you come in on this. And I'm, like I say, I'm really glad that you were able to make it out to this event today. And hopefully I'm there watching myself on video. But if not, I'm glad that you are. Uh, I am also not only a veteran myself, but I come from a long line of veterans. Um, my father was a uh, Army Green Beret, served 33 years in the uh, Army and was nominated to be a command sergeant major. My brother uh, was uh, an army mechanic for tanks. Uh, he did his time in Kentucky. And uh, I have lots of uh, cousins and uncles that have all served, some with my father, have jumped out of perfectly good airplanes. And as such, it's been instilled in me that there is a level of honor and duty that's involved with this. And you have to... Um, if you grew up with my father, you have to do something to change your world. You can't just stand idly by and, you know, watch the rest of the world go by while, unfortunately for us, it's crumbling around, down around our feet. So here I am uh, running in the third district uh, against uh, an opponent who, unfortunately, does not believe in his constitutional oath, uh, will not stand up for the uh, the values that were fought and paid for in, in blood many years ago that we have slowly eroded away over time through, um, unfortunately, bad legislation. And it's not something that's going to be turned around overnight, but it's something that needs to be started now. And we are the generation that are responsible to do this. We can't pass this on to our children. We're passing on enough debt to them as it is. Uh, this is something that we have to take care of uh, in this in this generation, it's incumbent upon us to do this. So there's a couple of things that I stand for, and they can all be summed up pretty easily uh, just by saying, I'm a constitutionalist. It's what I believe in. I do believe in the, uh, in the document 100%, not part of it, not when it's politically expedient for me to, uh, to use parts of it and say that they mean other things. I believe in the original um, intent of the Constitution, and the original intent of the Constitution is to restrain the federal government, to keep the federal government out of the business of things that it's incapable of doing at such a large level. Uh, I am a Ninth and Tenth Amendment person, and I believe that the states have a lot more responsibility to take care of the certain things in our lives that, unfortunately, the federal government is trying to get into, but I would not always say that states are doing certain things that they should be doing. There's a lot of things that should be left to the inv individual themselves because no one knows how to run your life better than you do. But 
for sure, the, the Constitution does state that the federal government needs to be out of these certain things, and that's what I want to focus on as your congressman. Uh, I'm not really in the business of giving away things because anytime you give something, you have to first take from someone else, and that's that's not what government's supposed to do. Government's supposed to provide a uh, a playing field of justice for all with an equality based upon that, an equality of opportunity and not an equality of results like they're trying to give us by redistributing everything. It's not... Uh, that's not in the Constitution, nor is that my personal belief. Uh, so Constitution is my biggest thing, but then that goes right into our civil liberties that are espoused inside of the, uh, the Bill of Rights. So unfortunately, today, a lot of them are being violated, and that's not the way that it should be. Uh, we have a Patriot Act that takes away Fourth Amendment rights. We have a National Defense Authorization Act that in subsequent years has taken the rule of posse comitatus away and has allowed for the military to be in our streets. And as an Air Force veteran, I don't see any reason why the military needs to be policing the streets of our country. Um, but then we also have a more recent National Defense Authorization Act that makes our habeas corpus, our right to a trial by jury, an option for the government. And that's a very scary thing. Because even if we, if we are not affected by ourselves at this point in time, allowing the government to make that an option for us instead of an absolute makes it so that people like my daughter, my 10-year-old daughter, when she grows up, she may be um, you know, violated in such a way. And that's a very scary thing to think of. So we can't just plan around today and say, oh, well, you know what? The cop stopped me today for a traffic ticket, and now... You know, it's okay because he read my Miranda rights to me before he did any of these things or whatever. And, you know, or I, got, I, I can always go and see the, uh, the, the judge about my ticket. But there may come a time where you can't. And that's why we have to protect those rights. That's why we have to be responsible and protect them instead of just believing that, you know, because I have freedom of speech today that, you know, it's, it's not being violated by, you know, the legislature. And that because I can stand here in front of you and talk right now that in the future it won't be that way. You know, as a matter of